Hello everyone, what a what a momentous way to start round two. You're watching the monthly winner box here at Grey Ogre Games. It's part of our Road to the Invitationals. My name is Mick, I'm your host for today. I was actually Well, you were watching. I was actually out there trying to resolve a uh, DDLP problem, um deck list problem. Okay, or deck or deck list problem. And uh well, both have now been changed, deck problem and deck list problem. Today, we are actually running at Comparative Ariel, which uh, there's a lot of, you know, it, it, it's very different. It's very different, you know, players for sealed Comparative Ariel is extremely, extremely different. So, yeah. Uh, and yeah, I unfortunately, I had to give uh, Kwang Kai a game loss for for leaving in sideboard cards uh, in the deck before uh, you know before the tournament started or before his round started. All right, uh, we're watching a match here between Link and Tuoren, and they're trading off creatures. The three one Raptor versus oh I forget what's the other one. Okay, and casting a Pyromancer, uh, Pyromaster. My bad. After us, uh, after combat, Stormfleet Pyromancer, my bad, uh, enters the battlefield with raid trigger, deals two damage to target creature or player, and here we go, Regisaur Alpha, four four, enters the battlefield. You get a three three. All other dinosaur creatures gain haste. Other dinosaurs you control gain haste, and uh, that's quite big. That's really quite big, and he's going to swing in with both guys. I believe that is a is oh that what is that creature? Is that trash of raptors? Nope. Is that a rummaging goblin? Nope. What is that? Now me is confused. Oh, it's a hit strong brute. Three three. Hit strong brute can't block. Uh, but it has menace if you control another pirate. So three mana for three three. It's got lots of upside. Uh, gonna decide whether he wants to swing with a 3-3 three, three dinosaur. Yep. It looks like he's gonna swing in with three uh with six total six points of damage. A hit strong brute and a uh, a dinosaur token with uh, which is a three three with trample. Link here deciding, all right, who do I block? Okay, so uh, that link deciding to block with the pyro master or pyromancer, uh, the the brute because the brute actually, well, three three trample. Okay, I can block, no problem. He's also, uh, but the you know, the the brute gains menace if you control another creature and. Uh, or you control another pirate, which uh, you know Tauren can just can just drop next turn and make uh, Link's life a living hell. Tauren here going to go down to five. And now casts. What is that? Oh, the two one first strike. Uh, what is her name? What's her name? Is the enters the battlefield is a two one first striker enters the battlefield and you can explore so emissary of sunrise that's the one. I guess we all there. already just saw alpha. Passes the turn. Okay, so only left with the brute. And now three three is facing down a two one first striker. Uh, 
and Torrin here just casts uh, is this a snapping sailback? Yeah, it's a snapping sailback. Oh no 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 not a snapping sailback, it's the, the four mana four five with reach. Uh what is his name? Uh grazing Grazing Whiptail. Grazing Whiptail is surprisingly quite strong. Uh, the fact that you're paying 4 mana, now it's double green. You're paying 4 mana, but you're not getting a spider anymore, a giant spider. Generally, what will happen is that you would have a giant spider. It's just a 2-4 uh, with reach. That's it. Okay, so the Whiptail is going to be attacking 3-4 with reach. And... Uh, Link needs to decide, do I uh, take the damage? Because on the swing back, swing back could be lethal and just takes three. Ixali's Guardian, or Ixali's, um, Ixali's Keeper, not Guardian, Ixali's Keeper. Uh, for seven mana, you can sacrifice it and target creature against plus five, plus five, and trample. Soren here going down to two. Not afraid that the other card in Link's hand might be uh, a a pyromancer, Stormfleet pyromancer. I like the cycle of cards: the the Ixali's keeper, the F Fire Shrine keeper, uh, the the cycle of keepers. I forgot what's the white one. Uh encampment keeper is the white one. What's the blue one? The blue one's that crap. Shaw keeper. And the black one is My Father's Keeper? No. Blight Keeper. Oh, I love the cycle of the keepers. Uh the fact that they are like one mana uh one mana do stuff. You know, one mana first strike, one mana flying, one mana menace. Uh uh, you know, two mana, two, two. Sure, Ixali's Keeper is the, the exception. One mana, zero, three, wall. All good stuff. Alright, Link here with three creatures on the battlefield. No pirates. I believe he doesn't have another pirate on the battlefield. No, that might be another pirate. Can't really tell what card that is though. But yeah, not risking his uh not risking his creatures does uh have two cards in hand. Okay, we're gonna fight. We're gonna fight and step, we're gonna fight the pounce. Plain straight up we fight, that's it, okay. Uh oh does his does his creature not die? Okay, I'm confused. Maybe I missed something. Maybe I missed something. Okay, maybe I didn't. I don't know. Uh, but that pounce should have killed the the uh, the raptor instead. Uh, sorry, the the uh, dinosaur token. I believe it should have killed it. But uh, yeah. Hmm. Okay, Link here going through uh, all the cards that he might have against Zoran. Zoran here just running, you know, red green monsters, red green dinosaurs. Link, uh, more on the pirate synergy, uh, but does have white cards. Uh, he's playing the red white, just aggro. I think. I don't know about you guys, but red white feels you know not aggressive enough. It doesn't have enough evasion as opposed to the blue white uh, from the set. So yeah, what do you guys think about the color pairings for the new set of Ixalan?
Yeah, if you just joined us, you are watching the. Ooh, if you just joined us, you're watching the monthly win a box here at Grey Ogre Games as part of our road to the Invitationals. If you want to find out more about how to join the Invitationals, at the uh, which will be held at the beginning of the next year in January, just head on down to greyogregames.com, find out how you can compete uh, and get yourself you know, placed in the Invitationals. The winner of today's tournament, obviously, I mean, they win a box, but they also, they also win... 30 or 40 qualification points. First place gets 40, second place gets 30, which means that they automatically qualify for the seasonal qualifiers. So yeah, that that that's actually a big boon. That's that helps a lot because you automatically get yourself into the seasonal qualifiers. And uh yeah, it's helpful. It's your your step, your first step towards uh, getting to the championship uh, next year, and the championship, you know, is five thousand dollars worth of cash prize to be won. If you just go for the championship, you sit down, you get one hundred and fifty dollars. It is going to be a nine round tournament, nine or ten rounds, nine round tournament, I believe. Um, but you know, it starts off with a round robin round robin draft and then so drafted placements round robin to determine top seed and bottom seeds uh and then you will fight off with um yeah just uh you'll fight it off and uh winner winner will take away one thousand five hundred dollars in cash prizes if you want to find out more make sure you go down to greyogregames.com all right uh Soren here has won one game. Uh, and will continue to continue to play. Uh, I think Link will be going first and he needs to be aggressive. His hand only one land and decides to mulligan. Uh, Soren looks like he's going to keep his grip of seven cards. Link here making the decision. Yes, it's not enough. Okay, when you play sealed, and I love sealed. I love limited. When you play limited, if your hand is literally a do-nothing hand because your deck isn't like crafted out of cards that you really want to craft it, you know, it is just whatever you've got. Uh, you don't want to be doing nothing. You want action. Action hand. Action hand is good, you know. So two lands here. Going to leave that third card on top. We'll find out what it is soon. Uh, it is a land, uh, but turn two, no play from either side. Good, he's drawing lands. He's drawing lots of lands now. Uh, the Brute hits the battlefield. It's 3-3. Three, three. Uh, can't block, but it has menace if you control another pirate, which is a lot of upside. Might want to play that... Uh, Wow, okay, so looks like Link is curving out here. Thrashing Raptors is a 3-3. Gets plus 2, plus 0 if you control another dinosaur. And uh, on Torrent's side, he's got Ixali's Keeper. And uh, and one of those... One of those... Um, oh, man. Uh, what vehicle is this? What vehicle is this? Oh, it's a Shadowed Caravel, I believe. Is it Sharovel? No, no, it's not a Sharovel Caravel. Sleek Schooner. Sleek Schooner. It's a crew one for three. That's it. That's all it does. Three mana for... Alright. So, uh, those two creatures do trade off and uh, Tauren here going to take five points of damage because the uh, Thrash Raptors do have Trample. And this... If he's able to play another pirate here, that'll be great. Oh, what cre what card is this? Oh man, this one's tough. Okay, so pounds. Wait, 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 wait. Hmm.
Okay, went out to Link's table to go and figure out what the hell was being pounced there. Uh, and it was a rare. Uh, this card's interesting. This one is really, really interesting. Uh, Til Tilonali's Skin Shifter. Uh, it's a 3 mana 0 1. It's got haste. It's a human shaman. When it attacks, so it's just 0 1, but when it attacks, it becomes a copy of another target non legendary attacking creature until end of turn. Very specific. Very specific what you can copy. So, um, in this case, what will happen is that he will have copied the Brute. And both of them now will be 3 3. Both of them will now be able, uh, you know, both of them now have Menace. Which means that you can't block uh you can't block both. And uh yeah, that would have that would have ended the game between uh Toran and uh Link, but uh you know, Link is still able to uh steal the win there. He didn't really steal the win. I think he was in commanding position the entire time. Toran didn't find his second colour, didn't find his red, unfortunately. And uh yeah, uh Link has taken a game. So the score now is one one. Uh, as much as I love Limited, love to be playing Limited all the time, just drafting sealed, uh, it's a fantastic format. Unfortunately, I'm not playing today and uh, this is the first time we're casting a sealed tournament for our winner box. In fact, just the first time I'm casting a sealed tournament. So this is a learning experience and yeah, it, it's really, really a lot of fun. I, I would say. But the cards, especially when, when it's new, when everything's new, it's hard. The cards don't match up like to you know to to what you know. Which is why I ran out there to go and figure out, hey, what's that card you you're playing? Uh Ling here gonna gonna maybe sideboard to slightly slower. Uh because he will be on the play. Uh he'll be on the draw. So Warren here on the play. And uh, hopefully both players will be able to keep a solid 7 and we'll get to see a whole lot of magic in the next round. If you just join us, you're watching our monthly winner box here at Grey Ogre Games. It's part of our Road to the Invitationals. My name is Mick, I'm your host for today. We've got 20 players here playing to try to win a box of Ixalan when it just released. That's awesome. Uh, but on top of that, not just winning the box. If you win the tournament, you are first and second place. You get enough qualification points to be invited to this seasonal qualifier. And, you know, it's it's that easy to get into a seasonal qualifier. Seasonal qualifier is, by the way, just free. It's free entry. That's That's it full stop you get invited to play and uh this time round the seasonal qualifier will be in december and it will be uh it will be standard and uh we're not quite sure not quite sure if it will be um what you call it it will be uh uh what you might call it we're not quite sure if it will be uh the in time for the new set release yes that's what i wanted to say the rivals of Ixalan, but definitely next year when the championship is is going is going on the um we will definitely see the new rotation of rivals of Ixalan. okay link here going down to to six torrent here also going down to six uh, not happy with their hands, and uh, that's the that's the best part about mulliganing. Uh, and I love the new mulligan rule where you know you get to scry one because you know riskier keeps become uh, more keepable. There we go. Okay, so going down to six, both sides, and I think Link should be quite happy with his hand. He's got lands, he's got spells. Toran on the other hand, gonna go. Okay, so he's gonna keep his hand. Uh, and bottom that looking for another land I suppose uh, because his hand mm, his hand is a lot of gas and uh, not a lot of lands I believe there's like two lands in there okay link here uh, probably gonna look for a white sauce and bottoms that card he's also got just two 
two lands? Is that two lands? Okay, so draws another mountain, unfortunately. Uh, needs that white source soon. Draws another mountain. Uh, but he has a turn two play. This is uh, one of the keepers. No, this is not one of the keepers. Hmm. Man, I've got to go, go through all these cards just to figure out who, who are these creatures or what are these creatures. Who is this? I'm curious. Is it a dinosaur rider? Or one of those dinosaur riders. Oh, Tionali, yeah, Tionali's right, knight, Tionali's knight. Uh, they're gonna get rid of the dinosaur on Tauren's side. I love just dinosaurs versus pirates. Dinosaurs versus pirates. Uh, last match we saw like Merfolk versus dinosaurs, and Merfolk came out on top. Uh, this game we're watching dinosaurs versus pirates. So I'm not quite sure whether pirates has got it in them, but they've got to try. Uh, pirate dinosaurs too, uh, human dinosaurs. All right, so just mono red on Link's side, unfortunately, and uh, Zoran here as well. Okay, but he does find his red source. It looks like he's going to pass the turn. Neither one of them willing to trade off their creatures. Um, well, won't trade off their creatures. One's a one four, and then one's a two two. There we go. Okay, so five five trample the charging 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 gom monstrous saw right charging monstrous saw one of the most powerful cards I've seen in a long long while. There we go charging monstrous saw. Um, pretty good five mana for five five trample five mana for five five trample haste guy nice very nice. Uh. Yeah, and on uh, Tauren's side, he does cast an auto pack hunt master. Dragon spells you cast cost one less to cast, and then target, target, tap it, target dinosaur gains haste. So, uh, it's a one two only. Oh man, there you go, swinging in with the team. There are blocks with the one two. Uh, sorry, blocks with the one four. And uh, yeah, cast a one one. What's his name? Raptor Hatchling. Uh, one ha Raptor Hatchling is two mana, one one. Uh, enrage, and then you put a three three green dinosaur creature token with trample onto the battlefield. There we go. Uh, a good blocker here from Zoran. I believe this is deep. No, this is not. Oh, what creature is this? Yeah, Spike Tail Ceratops. Uh, the is that Spike Tail Ceratops? Isn't that five mana to cast? That can't be Spike Tail Spike Tail Ceratops, right? Wait, 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 wait.
Okay, so Spike Ceratops. That was Spike Ceratops. I forgot about the auto pack, uh, auto pack uh, shaman guy. Uh, so Spike Ceratops, very good. Uh, they were asking. So Link was asking. Uh, okay, so what happens with the Spike Ceratops? Because it can block an additional creature, what you can do is actually. Uh, the question was, since you can block with an additional creature, okay, well, how does combat resolve? So this is how combat resolves. Okay, so uh, Ling was giving a situation where, okay, he charges in with a rampaging dinosaur. And then uh, you decide, so Link will decide the order. So uh, Toran here blocks with the auto pack, auto pack guy and the uh, rampaging dino, uh, the, the, the ceratops. First, you choose the order in which damage is assigned. So, the Ceratops and the Auto Pack here is considered uh, like double blocking the the monstrous saw, and so you choose the order for that. Then, if there's nothing else, then we go to damage assignment, and so Link will choose the damage assigned. Uh, Ling will choose damage assignment onto the creature. And then Swaran actually gets to decide, okay, this is how I want to assign the damage to the other creatures. So usually blockers don't get to assign damage. Uh, but in this case, it's uh, slightly different. Link here looking for his green mana still. Unfortunately, unable to find more green mana uh, to be able to cast his spells. Uh, but he has been doing okay so far, I guess. I guess. Hmm. I'm wondering what Link has in hand that could help him win the game or what he has in his deck that can help him uh, out of this situation. Okay, swings in with the Deep Root Warrior. If he gets blocked, he gets plus one, plus one. And probably trying to trigger Raid here. Uh, otherwise, it will be able to swing him for two points of damage. Link can decide just to take that damage, uh, in, instead of blocking. Because the deep root, deep root warrior will become a three three if you do block it, and then uh, what I suspect Zoran does have is a pyromancer fleet. Uh, what's that fleet? Pyromancer ship fleet, storm fleet pyromancer. Uh, that might change uh, the the tide of battle quite significantly. If uh, Link does lose his monstrous all, then this might be problematic. Okay. So they do trade off, and yeah, does does try to trigger raid there, which is the cannon raid, fire blast cannon, fire cannon blast. Sorry, three mana deals three damage to target creature. But it deals 6 damage to target creature instead if you attacked with a creature this turn. So Link here deciding, okay, I know, you know, I know your tricks. And so I'm just going to block and we're going to trade creatures. Unfortunately, Link here, sorry, doesn't need his uh, green mana, needs white mana instead. Uh, does, uh, does eventually find his planes. And I'm going to be casting the, uh, the Paladin. Paladin of the Bloodstain, 4 mana for 3 2. When it enters the battlefield, take a 1 1 white vampire creature token with li uh, lifelink or create. Sorry, not take. It's a vampire knight. How vampires are very noble. I, I love the, the idea of uh, vampires as conquistadors. Swinging in with Ixali's Keeper. Because it trades with everything on the board on Link's side. And uh, I think he can just take the two points of damage. What's all right here? Probably, yep. Stormfleet Arsenist uh, gets you to sacrifice. So it's raid trigger. Sacrifice a permanent. Uh, 
But it is big. Stormfleet Arsenis is a 4-4. It is significantly huge. And uh, could could spell this some disaster for Link. But let's see. A pounce would help, for sure. There we go. Bishop of uh Bishop of Revival, I believe. What what's the guy's name? Bishop of Rever Rebirth, not Revival. So it's a 3-4 Vigilance. When it attacks, you may return target creature card with converted mana cost 3 or less uh, from your graveyard onto the battlefield. Quite a strong ability, but the problem is that it's a 3-4. Uh, unless you can give it flying or you can pump it up somewhat, it's going to be a bit difficult. Okay. <laughs> uh, interesting, interesting conversations here happening in the store uh, about the first pack, first pick. Okay. Okay, so link here and dig in deep, dig in deep. Needs to find something to get him out of this hole. Uh but he is putting Swarren back, making sure that he's not able to attack here. Uh, Link here casting another two creatures. What are they? What are they? One of them looks to be... Man. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. are. One of them is a Pterodon Knight. Yeah. One of them is a Pterodon Knight and the other... Can't really tell what's the other one. Which one? This one, this one. Oh, it's uh, Adanto Vanguard. Oh man, Adanto Vanguard. Okay, no wonder I didn't see. You see, it's, it's really... Uh, yeah, there we go, Adanto Vanguard. Okay. I'm trying to identify everything by pictures and I've been able to do that like with modern and standard quite easily. But uh, yeah, with sealed, especially with a new set, uh, it, it becomes a little bit more difficult because uh well the nature of it is that it's new we we don't have uh too much exposure to these cards just yet because uh watsy doesn't send us like preview cards come on watsy up your game yeah uh so ilham who has Yo, just joined yeah, me yeah, at the up? table um how are you doing for the tournament two zero two zero whoa 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 not bad, not yeah, bad. Yeah, I yeah. thought you said your deck bad. I thought it was bad because it's the basically the worst color pair in the set. No, no. You know what's the worst color pair in the set? What? Red white. Red no. white seriously is the worst color pair in the I set. I mean, I mean, there's no synergy, but then that you it's have power. aggress. It's yeah, aggressive. Power. Yes, yeah. I rather have blue white. Like seriously, there's so yeah, much yeah, synergy true, in blue true. white. Okay, but uh, yeah, you're saying, but it's not bad, right? It's them, not bad. Them, them damned uh, vampires. They good. They good. They is good. So, <laughs> basically, I have the uh, Bishop of Rebirth. Oh, which yeah. Is you see, the, the current card you see in the, in the, in the yeah, screen now. The, and yep. then I have uh, the 3 mana Tutu. The vampire uh, ETB Drain. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. So, basically, my opponent keep attacking in the air. Then I keep I jumping. I blocking and then attack back yeah, with the... Attack, I, I attack back with the... Uh, uh, the Bishop, Bishop Rebirth. Rebirth. Return back my 3-1-2-2. Three, three two, two. Yeah. So each, each turn I drain my life. Yeah. <laughs> so it's good. <laughs> but it's a, it's a tough match because it's a mirror my game too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, here, Link here going to be casting a Stormfleet Pyromancer targeting. It does resolve. Uh, the raid trigger targets the uh, Ceratops here. 
and uh, you know Torren here able to get rid of the the bishop. Oh, all right, and uh, sacrifices Ixali's keeper to to power up the the ceratops. I thought Ixali's keeper was like eight mana. Right. Yeah, you need a banner, but he but he have one uh, burst of paradise there. Uh, oh right, right, the drover. So okay, okay, that's why. That's why. So uh, match report. Uh, match Brian report. won against uh, Jeffrey. Oh, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Before the match, I told Brian. Uh, he he asked me like, how do we against Jeffrey? So I told him, uh, you just need to. You just him. need to yeah, screw screw, screw him, yeah, lens. mana screw him, yeah, mana yeah. screw. I think he he, he was able to do that. Game one, it works. Oh, okay. Game two and three is is purely luck. I think. I oh, think. Okay. I think Jeffrey draw more lands compared to him. Oh, yeah. Okay. Good job. Good yeah. job. Uh, good job, Ryan. Yeah. yeah really, really, this Jeffrey. Jeffrey is a force to be reckoned with, especially when it comes to limited. Uh, he plays way too much. Um, you know, limited standard. Uh, for for anyone to try to out out trick him. Mm. And uh, one thing about Jeffrey is that he plays like a lot of mind tricks with you. Like he, yeah, he would true. just, he would never fall. He will never scoop until that last attack. Mm. And that's right. what makes you a little bit worried because like, oh man, he's got the answer for everything. Mm. And then you try to do it and y you try to call his bluff and he's not bluffing sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he drove the perfect card. Oh, what was this? It's what? uh the, dr the dragon, no, no, the dinosaur that gives other creature flying. So you can give the uh, holy smokes. Uh, oh, this? okay, okay, okay. I know what this is. Uh, man, need to need to check the. Yeah, they're gonna imperial aerosol. When it enters the battlefield, target creature you control gets plus one, plus one, and flying. Uh, he's gonna give it to the Stormfleet pyromancer, and gonna swing in with the Adanto. Is that the Adanto Vanguard? No, no, no. It's it's the imperial. The oh, the the knight. The, the knight, knight too has flying. Uh, and that's is that seven points? That's uh, that's four? six. Eh, seven. Yeah, seven. What's three. the knight? The knight gains plus one plus zero and flying, right? Oh no, it's three. It's no, a three three. The 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 the, the flying dino give plus one plus one and flying. So it's seven. right, right, right. Yes. Yep. This game and it's game and Ling here narrowly takes it. The board was the board was just stalled out, and Ling was able to 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 sneak in that win. Uh, with a top deck Imperial Aerosaur or something like that. I forget what's that. Mm, yeah. Aero, aero, uh, Aeroplanosaur. Yeah, aerosaur. Imperial Aerosaur. There we go. Okay. We're going to go for a short break and we'll be back in about 7 minutes time with round 3. So don't go away. But before we go, just want to remind you that you can catch all the streams on Tuesdays 8pm Singapore time. Wednesdays as well. Wednesdays we do modern. Uh, if you miss those, just head on down to greyogregames.com, uh, youtube.com slash greyogregames to catch all the replays. You want to find out more about the, uh, what you call it, the uh, invitationals, go on down to greyogregames.com. Last but not least, do listen to the Power9 podcast every week. Myself and Alfian, we get together and we talk shop about this little game called Magic the Gathering. Okay, we're going to come back in a short while, so don't go away. We'll be right back. <laughs> 